follows up by saying, your older brother, Fred, Fred Jr., who died from heart failure brought on by acute alcoholism, had a more difficult time with him, didn't he? Him referring to their dad. And Donald Trump responds by saying, take one environment and it will work completely different on different children. Our family environment, the competitiveness was a negative for Fred. It wasn't easy for him being cast in a very tough environment, and I think it played havoc on him. I was very close to him, and it was very sad when he died. A toughest situation I've had. And then Glenn asks him, what did you learn from his experience? And apparently there was a pause here, and then Trump says, nobody has ever asked me that, but his death affected everything that has come after it. I think constantly that I never really gave him thanks for it. He was the first Trump boy out there, and I subconsciously watched his moves. Uh, then Glenn asks, and the lesson? And Trump says, I saw people really taking advantage of Fred, and the lesson I learned was always to keep my guard 100%, whereas he didn't. He didn't feel that there was really reason for that, which is a fatal mistake in life. People are too trusting. I'm a very untrusting guy. I study people all the time, automatically. It's my way of life, for better or worse. And then Glenn asks, why? And Trump says, I am very skeptical about people. That's self-preservation at work. I believe that, unfortunately, people are out for themselves. At this point, it's to many people's advantage to like me. Would the phone stop ringing? Uh, would these people kissing ass disappear if things were not going well? I enjoy testing friendship. Uh, everything in life, to me, is a psychological game, a series of challenges you either meet or you don't. I'm always testing people who work for me. And then Glenn asks how. And Trump says, I will send people around to my buyers to test their honesty by offering them trips and other things. I've been surprised that some people least likely to accept a trip from a contractor, at least from Trump's judgment, uh, did, and then some of the most likely did not. You can never tell until you test. Uh, the human species is interesting in that way. So to me, friendship can really be tested only in bad times. Uh, I instinctively mistrust many people. It is not a negative in my life, but a positive. Uh, Playboy wouldn't be talking to me today if I weren't a cynic. So I learned that from Fred, and I owe him a lot. He could have ultimately been a happy guy, but things just went the unhappy way. Um, okay, I'm going to skip ahead now to the end here. Uh, Glenn asks about your own toughness. And Trump says, well, as I said, I study people and in every negotiation, I weigh how tough I should appear. I can be a killer and a nice guy. You have to be everything. You have to be strong. You have to be sweet. You have to be ruthless. And I don't think any of it can be learned. Either you have it or you don't. And that is why most kids can get straight A's in school, but fail in life. And then Glenn asks, is there a master plan to your deal making or is it all improvisational? And Trump says, it's much more improvisational than people might think. And then the final question here is, as you continue to make more deals, as you accumulate more and more, there's a central question that arises about Donald Trump. How much is enough? And Trump says, as long as I enjoy what I'm doing without getting bored or tired, the sky's the limit. <laughs> And uh, here we all are, right? So, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. Hopefully this, uh, this piqued your interest and you'll go back and read it. But, yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care, guys. Who do you have? Well, that's right, Tom. One of the interesting things about any national convention is the surprising people who show up on the floor. And here tonight is real estate tycoon and best-selling author Donald Trump. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. You have flirted with the idea of politics. Now you're here at your first national convention. Does that get you interested in possibly making the plunge? Now you have to tell me something. Who told you I flirted? Well, I, mean, I didn't know that I flirted. Well, you took out full-page ads in the New York Times to talk about your foreign policy. Oh, Some people would say... Strongly. I do feel very strongly about the country. I love the country. But I think you're going to have probably George Bush as your next president. He's an excellent guy, an excellent man. He's a friend of mine, and I'm here for that reason. Well, well I wasn't talking about this year, Mr. Trump, but you have said that if you ran for president, you'd win. I think I'd have a very good chance. I mean, I like to win. When I do something, I like to win. I like to, uh, I like to do well, and I think I probably would have a pretty good chance.